What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning, so come by and say hello. All right, well, we are on the final of these Gladiator deep dive videos. Uh, I didn't realize that there were only two cards here, otherwise I probably would have stuck it onto the death one, but um, only two cards. I'm doing neutral and dragon together, and if you're new to this, I covered all of the other Splinters in their own separate videos, um, and the reason for this is because I think Gladiator cards are going to become much more prevalent with the conscription ability with the soulbound summoners where you'll be able to play gladiator cards in ranked play uh, there's also the gladiator tournaments uh, that are, are starting to introduce gladiators to the tournament scene as well as the conscription ability as uh, conscription as a rule set where you may not even need the summoners you'll just be able to play a gladiator card uh, if you have one so you can clearly see here these are both legendary cards and i don't have either of them but we'll start with the dragon card uh, which is Larissa Corrado. So seven mana, you get two magic damage, but it is double strike and you have bloodlust. So this is a card that's doing four damage per turn off the bat. Uh, and, you know, if you pair it with someone like, uh, what's his name, Delwyn, uh, you're able to get a lot more than that, <laughs> doing six damage, essentially. The only thing that, that bothers me is the fact that it's not very fast, or she's not very fast, and only three health. So this is something I would potentially look to use in a an equalizer rule set or something, or I'd want to make sure that she's protected with, you know, maybe a dragon that has uh, taunt or another monster that has taunt. Um, at the higher levels, or at level 2, which is max for silver, you do get the void ability. So uh, again, I think that comes in clutch, but with only 3 health, I don't think that really matters as much. Now, at gold, you get the dispel ability, which I think is something that's going to become, uh, something that is going to become much more desirable with Bloodlust especially. So here's a card where if you are able to play Larissa, you know that there's going to be another, uh, there's potential for a gladiator card to be on the other side as well. If you're in a tournament, in a fray, or in a, uh, a conscription rule set. So I think that, you know, the dispel ability could be valuable there. But to me, where this card really shines is at the highest levels because you get the blast ability. So keep in mind, double strike, blast. Now you're not just doing four damage, but you are potentially doing, you know, six damage around. And if you're, if it's a snipe rule set, for example, you're doing even multiple damage to other monsters that are on either side of your opponents uh, or opposing monster that it's targeting. So it's not the best. Um, and I think that there's not, you know, for seven mana, two damage, double strike and two speed. It's, it's kind of like, it's kind of just like there, right? So I think it can be valuable in many instances, but I, I also feel like when you're playing Dragon, if you're playing Dragon, there's just so many good options too. Um, and, you know, its abilities from a support standpoint, to me, aren't that great, if I'm being honest. Dispel is good, but, um, you know, Void is like, are you going to put this in the front as a tank with only three health? Probably not. Again, equalize the rule set, maybe. But, um, you know, overall, I, I don't know. I, it's, it, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sold on it. Maybe I just don't have one yet and I haven't played. So if you have one, let me know. And then the neutral one, which I think is actually probably one of the best cards for, or gladiator cards overall. This is Tatiana Blade. Now, at level one, you do get close range, which allows you to essentially have a double attack no matter where you are, or even if you're in the front, right? So you get two, for eight mana, you get two range attack and three melee attack, and your speed is five. So right off the bat, you are relatively fast, um, and you can do five damage per turn. Again, eight mana is a little hefty, uh, but I do like it. Now, the only thing is that you only get five health, so it's, it can't take that much of a hit, uh, but you do get the dodge ability at level two, um, and then at level three, you get Inspire, which can help your entire team, as well as an additional uh, additional speed too, right? So you get Inspire, so now you're doing six damage, right? Because this becomes four melee damage. And then at ma fully maxed out, you get the True Strike ability, which means that you will never miss. So for eight mana, you're doing six damage at the higher levels. Um, again, with Bloodlust, I think that comes in really handy, especially because you have almost like a double strike ability if you throw them up front. Uh, but here's the thing. I think what makes her valuable is the fact that there's multiple rule sets in which she can be uh, she can be utilized, right? Also, the fact that she's neutral. So it's pretty much in any, any, uh, any game except for taking sides or any rule set except for taking sides. So if it's a, like a melee 
well, if it's a melee only rule set, you're out a lot to player. If it is a you know super sneak equal opportunity um, and uh, melee mayhem, like all those where melee monsters can attack from anywhere. Well, now you're able to get a double attack and hide her in the back or in the middle of your line, which I think could be really valuable. So again, one of my one of my favorite cards to uh, that's at the top of my wish list. But again, I think. Where, where it really starts to shine is when you get it into gold, and that's six BCX away from me since I have zero. But, you know, uh, we're working towards it, and hopefully at some point I will be able to utilize blood and power stones to increase my chances of getting those cards. But that is all I have for you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the series. Uh, we'll keep this one short and sweet. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But uh, hopefully, as I said, this was helpful. Uh, it was helpful for me to understand where we are moving towards. And I look forward to all of the gladiators being involved in many of the different matches and areas of the game in the future. So that is all I have. Have an amazing rest of your day. We'll catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Take care.